Hello everyone, welcome to Maxstone University of New Haven. I'm Kai. Um, today we are going to discuss some money problems, well, more specifically interest rate. So in this topic, uh, we are uh, we are trying to understand uh, what interest rate is, uh, how to solve interest rate problems, and more specifically, we want to understand how compound interest rate works. So basically, we are trying to solve compound interest rate problems at the end. Right. So let's get to it. Um, first, let's start with what is interest rate. Okay. So interest rate is basically the percentage of money that you get charged for borrowing or you earn from savings. So let's give you an example. So let's say um, you are uh, doing you are borrowing three hundred dollars from your friends. Why? Because um, you want to buy a switch, right? So the new Zelda is released, so you want to buy a switch so you can play it. You try to borrow three hundred dollars, but your friend says no. Why? Because he wants to buy a, a switch himself as well, so he says no. So what you can offer then is you could say, hey. Uh, let's say if you um if you if you borrow me three hundred dollars, I will pay you back three hundred and thirty after a month. Okay, and basically what you're doing here is you are paying him thirty dollars extra after a month, right? And this thirty dollars is going to be your interest for this month. And basically, that means your pers uh, your interest rate is thirty dollars divided by three hundred, which is your the money you borrow, is ten percent. That is your interest rate, thirty divided by three hundred, right? The percentage of money you get charged for borrowing, right? Ten percent. So and because it is um, calculated for a month, right? So it is also called monthly interest rate, right? This 10% is a monthly interest rate. But that's, on, to be honest, that's not really often used in real life. People really don't, don't really deal with monthly interest rate. Uh, in real life, people are dealing with annual interest rate, right? Um, and it's it also have another name called annual percentage rate. So we have a name called APR. Right? Another term that's fairly important is principal. Right? So the principal is basically um, the original amount of money that you borrowed or invested. Right? So the principal uh, basically the principal in our example is this three hundred dollar. It's the original money like that you ask for, right? You ask for three hundred dollars from your friend, so your principal is three hundred dollars. And now we have uh, in simple interest and compound interest. So these two are just two kinds of interest that is calculated in different ways, right? So even if we have same interest rate. For both kind of interest, the, it will still give you two different values, right? So because these two are basically just two kind of interest. So for a simple interest, it's fairly simple, as it suggests. So it's just calculated based upon the principle and the time. Later, you will see in the formula, it only involves these two elements. And as for compound interest, it will involves more. It's it's more like um, interest accumulation, and you need to calculate your new interest based on this accumulation, right? So it's sort of you are calculating your new interest based on the money you owed, uh, the money you owed, or the money people owe you so far and 
that means you are you, each time you're calculating your interest you have a bigger number base right so basically it just tells you the uh, your interest will getting bigger and bigger right this you will see it when when we get to the formula and uh, hold on. let's get to it so how to calculate simple interest simple interest is basically a formula as sim uh, equal si is equal to p times r times t right here si just stands for the interest so basically basically it's telling you if you're borrowing a p amount of money you just you can calculate the interest thing to pay by p times r times t right so P stands for principal, R stands for interest rate, T times equals to time. It's very simple, right? And for compound interest, it's a bit different, right? So it has a little bit complicated formula such as A equal to P times A 1 plus R over N uh, with the power of N times T, right? A is basically just referring to the total amount of money that's um that's that's, that's you uh, basically you owing people or people owing you right it's the total amount of money and the P it's referring to principal and the R is what starting to make difference it's annual interest rate right it's annual it's always annual. Right, even though the problem statement may giving you give you a different uh, interest rate, you just make it annual. You always need to stick to annual so you can use this formula. Right, and n is number of times in uh, number of times interest is compounded per year. Again, you see per year. T is the time of money, uh, the time the money is invested or borrowed it for, and it's can. It's in years. So you see, when you are calculating compound interest, the first thing you always need to keep in your mind is everything in years. All right. Do not forget about uh, forget that. So and from the formula, you can also see how it get, how it, how it works, right? <clears throat> Basically, um basically it's it's suggesting every time the uh, interest is compounded it's getting bigger and bigger right so when the when the when the first time you borrow it what you owe uh, when, you, when you borrow money what you owe is just P right and when the interest is first time compounded it's starting to have p times one n, right? You're getting this. You're you're owing owing the bank or your friend this. And as the time goes by, this this exponent part will keep increasing right so you are owing more and more money so basically each time because it's increasing at exponential level it will your your interest will increase more and more and more so it will eventually you you are having each time you your interest is compounded is compounding both your uh, your previous uh, principal and your previous interest it's compounding put two things together as a number base so it's it's accumulating really high and it's like accumulating an increasing speed so that's what it compound mean the interest will be really large if you let's say you put it for 10 years something like that right that's the mechanism so let's see some real example and you can probably get a better understanding upon this. So example one. Um and opens and saving account with a deposit of six hundred and seventy dollars. 
So she will earn 1.5% uh, interest each year on her money. How much interest will she uh, earn over a period of 10 years? So in this equation, uh, in this question, the first thing um, we need to spot is this sentence. It says she will earn 1.5% uh, interest each year on her money, right? What that means? It means it's a simple interest question, right? Because the interest, uh, the money accumulation is solely based on the original deposit on her money, right? And it's also depends on the uh, on the time. So it's each year, right? So therefore, we need to have this equation. We need to have this equation. And we can figure out from the problem statement, we can figure out the principal is uh, 670, right? It's the original deposit. R is 1.5%, right? T is 10 year, therefore, the e, how, it's asking for how much interest, right? So we're calculating the interest. So the interest would be, for one year, it will be 670 times 0 0.15, uh, per, uh, 0 0.015, right? It will give us a uh, $10 per year, uh, $10 of interest per year. And then we times that with 10 years, which is here is suggested in the problem statement, it will give us 105, right? 150 cents as our total interest, right? Not too bad, right? That's simple, um, a simple interest. As for as for the compound interest, it will be a little bit more complicated. So you see, in this example, it has uh, Lex has uh, $1,078 uh, in saving account. He opened six years ago. So basically, this is suggesting the Lex having this amount of money now, right? So this is not your, no longer your principal, right? It's the total amount of money he's having right now. So it's uh, basically the A, right, instead of P, right? It's an A. And, he, and his account has an annual interest rate of annual interest rate, right? So this is exactly what we need for R. It's 6.8%. And it's compounded annually, which means what? It's compounded once per year. So n equals one, right? And here it's a six years. So basically that tells us t equal to six. And then we can pull out our equation, I mean formula, right? You can see we have a is here. P, uh, we don't know, it's fine, but we have R, N, everything, and T, everything figured out, right? We can just put it in into. So you can see A is equal to uh, 1078 0 0.8 dollars, and R is equal to 6.8% per year, N equals to 1, T equals to 6 years, right? And when we put the number into it, we get this beautiful equation, right? And what's it, well, what the question is asking for is how much money did the Lex use to open his saving account, which is asking in his initial uh, deposit, right? Which is asking for the P. So we will have uh, after calculation we will have this uh, 170.80.8 equals to p times 1.484 and then when we uh, divide uh, 1.484 on both sides we will have the initial deposit as $1,200 right. 
So that's for compounded um uh, com compounded interest. So as long as you figure out what the problem is saying and you figure out uh, how to put those numbers into this formula, you are able to solve it, right? It's a little bit more complicated, but I think it's not too bad, right? And uh, let's do a little summary, right? So um, basically the simple interest, as you could see, it's uh, very simple. It's basically calculating only um, using principal balance, uh, which is our original principal, uh, original um, deposit or investment, right? So, and of course, you need to involve time, right? And the principal is in same for every year, and the interest increase in a fixed rate. Right? So you don't, you won't see the in, in interest increment vary. Uh, in simple interest, right? So as you can see here in the in the graph, it's uh, increasing in a straight line, right? It's it's a it behaves as a linear um, linear increment increasing. So as for the compound interest, it's a bit different, right? It's based on principal balance plus any out uh, outstanding interest already occurred. So it's basically saying your interest rate. Uh, your, your compound interest is compounding everything including your interest and your um, principal together to calculate the new interest it's compounding everything occurred before to calculate the new interest right and interest uh, compounds over time and increasing exponential rate as i suggested in a previous slides you could see um as so as the time goes by, it, it, it what really matters is its exponent, right? Exponent will become higher and higher, so that's why it's changing in a differential, uh, no, in an exponential uh, curve, right? So the in the in the real world, the exam example would be the credit card, right? Your credit card bill is pretty much um calculated in that way, so. Yeah, so basically there's a joke about uh, about this. It's like you should never play hide and seek with banks because the their interest upon you is always compounding, right? So uh, you shouldn't, basically that's why you shouldn't wait too long to um, pay your credit card bill or anything that's based, uh, basically the compound interest because your review will eventually stack higher and higher, right? So this is it, and here's the, the here is the uh, source I've um, used for the uh, for for the for the first slides. Um, I didn't use much. It's pretty pretty much based on my own uh, understanding. So. If you guys have um, more uh, more questions, feel free to drop by um, the mess zone, right? So we always welcome new, uh, new students to come in, and we are here to answer your questions. All right, this is pretty much it. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.